General Cardiovascular Exam. For the cardiovascular exam, the patient should be gowned. Lift the table to 30 degrees and have the patient lie down. Remember to pull out the footrest. Always stand on the patient's right side. Inspect the patient's ankles for signs of edema. Push on the skin over the tibia to screen for pitting edema. Edema will be less evident if the patient has been lying down or sitting for a significant period of time. Inspect the patient's neck and identify the carotid and jugular pulses. The carotid artery lies just medial to the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Palpate the carotid arteries one side at a time and note the amplitude and contour of the pulsations. If taken earlier, note the vital sign values for pulse and blood pressure. If the pulse and blood pressure have not been taken, if the values reported are abnormal, or you suspect the values are not accurate, you should measure the blood pressure and pulse yourself as part of a thorough cardiovascular exam. Observe for movement of the precordium, the lower wall of the thorax, anterior to the heart. The apical pulse is normally found at the point of maximal impulse, or PMI, located in the fifth intercostal space near the mid-clavicular line. Identify the apical pulse visually, palpate the apical pulse, and feel for any thrills or extra movements. The large flat surface of your stethoscope is called the diaphragm. Press the diaphragm firmly against the skin to optimally hear most sounds. Flip the head of the stethoscope to turn on the small side, the bell. Make sure you have removed the plastic diaphragm from this side. Place the bell gently against the skin to hear low frequency sounds. Pressing the bell firmly against the skin makes it function as a diaphragm. Next, you will auscultate the heart with the diaphragm of your stethoscope. Listen to the aortic area in the right second intercostal space, the pulmonic area in the left second intercostal space, the tricuspid listening areas over the third, fourth, and fifth intercostal spaces at the left sternal border, and the mitral area in the left fifth intercostal space at the midclavicular line. While auscultating the heart, listen for abnormal heart sounds such as expiratory splitting of S2, presence of S3 or S4, ejection sounds or systolic clicks, gallops, murmurs, or rubs. Never listen to the heart over the gown. Next, flip the head of your stethoscope to turn on the bell. Auscultate the mitral area with the bell. Auscultate the other areas with the bell if time permits. The bell may allow you to hear low sounds that are inaudible with the diaphragm. To test for carotid buoys, place your stethoscope over each carotid artery. Ask the patient to hold his or her breath to remove confounding sounds. If present, a buoy is a swooshing sound made by blood passing through the occluded artery. To assess jugular venous pressure, position the patient on the exam table with the head elevated at 30 degrees. Use tangential lighting to identify the jugular venous pulse. The jugular vein runs lateral to the sternocleidomastoid muscle from below the clavicle up towards the jawline. Identify the top of the visible pulsations. You may need to raise the bed for a hypertensive patient or lower the bed for a hypotensive patient to make the top of the oscillations visible. Place a ruler perpendicular to the floor over the sternal angle. Place a straight edge at the top of the pulsation, running at 90 degrees to the ruler. The height of the pulsation is related to jugular venous pressure. Normal values are below 5 or 6 centimeters.
To better hear an S3 sound or a murmur over the mitral area, roll the patient on his or her left side. Palpate to locate the PMI. Auscultate the mitral area with the bell. If present, a mitral murmur may sound like To better hear aortic insufficiency, ask the patient to sit up and lean forward. Have the patient exhale and hold their breath. The aortic area has shifted down with the patient leaning forward, so listen to the third and fourth left intercostal space with the diaphragm. If present, aortic insufficiency may sound like You must keep special considerations in mind when performing a cardiac exam on a female. Your